जय श्री माता जी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन लेट्स ऑल बाउ डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेजा मद कुंडलिनी एंड पुट बंधन माता जी यू आर श्री गणेशा मदर काइंडली स्टैब्लिश ऑल द क्वालिटीज ऑफ श्री गणेशा विद इन अस will recite shri ganesh mantra in this meditative state we will now hear shramata ji speech I was overjoyed 
you see the way you had organized this beautiful welcome. I must say that it's your love which finds all kind of expressions of enjoying Sahaja Yoga. I really can't understand how these unique ideas come to your heads and <coughs> you represent the different countries from where you have come. I wish you carry these flags back to your own country and tell them the message that the time has come for our resurrection, that we have to rise. We have to rise above this human level to a higher level of existence. And if that happens, then how it changes your life, how it makes you happy, how you lose all your absurd ideas of hatred and of harming others, injuring others, all this kind of ideas which have worked out to give some sort of a sadistic pleasure to many people and they have enjoyed the way they want to destroy the joy of others, the happiness of others. To maintain the happiness, I know, you being Sahaja Yogis, you have to bear a lot, tolerate a lot of nonsense. You have already done it. And gradually, once Sahaja Yoga is established in your own countries as something that is so beautiful, so very pure, so very important, that all others in your countries also will try to follow that path which you have crossed over. Only your lives are the ones which will reflect the beauty of your inner being and of such. I told you yesterday what was missing in the human awareness and that the attention was not on the Spirit. But when it is on the Spirit, what happens to you? Firstly, you become, according to Sanskrit words, gunatit. You go beyond all the three gunas. That means you are no more a person, who is tamoguni, means the one who has got all kinds of desires of self-indulgence. Your attention moves from there to the second style where you are rajoguni, the right-sidedness. You want to do something, want to show something, you want to become something, you want to compete with others, all this struggle just disappears. Atit means beyond. Then sattva that is also where you are seeking, where you see that what's wrong in this kind of extreme behavior and you just hate that kind of life and you want to get out of it and then you start seeking. That also is finished. All the gunas are finished. 
so you become gunatit. It just happens when your attention goes to your spirit. Because now the attention is not on anyone of your inherent, we can say, or conditioned qualities or of egoistical qualities. So you become a person who is beyond this. This is something very remarkable as far as for normal life, but for you it is not, it just happens. You just enjoy being yourself. You no more concern about your own conveniences, comforts and petty things. But what happens is that you just go beyond all these three gunas which have been dominating you this way or that way. So that's how you cross the limit of human awareness, firstly. Then the second one is you become kalatit. You go beyond time. I know today I was late somehow, it just works out that way. But you didn't miss the time. You are still enjoying, I could see sitting in the house that you are all in a very enjoyable mood, all of you are enjoying nicely. I am not here, but still you are enjoying. This is beyond, you are not bound by time. Whatever is the time is your own, because you are standing in the present, you are not standing here and thinking of the future. You didn't think about what will happen tomorrow or how will you catch your plane or how will you do this. Here you were just enjoying, enjoying the present and the present is the reality. If you are thinking of the future or of the past, then you are not in reality. I have told many a times that past is finished and future doesn't exist. So at this moment you are here sitting, perhaps maybe waiting for Me, maybe just enjoying every moment of your stay here, of your connections with you. And this enjoyment cannot be described how you are enjoying this, Otherwise people would be seeing the watch, wondering why Mother has not come, what is the problem, why she is not arrived and uh, all kinds of ideas come over. It helps a lot to be Kalatit. I remember in Nasik, uh, I had to work very hard because no Sajagi would come forward to do anything, they were so shy and so much worried. And it so happened, luckily or unluckily, we can say, that my car failed on the way and I was delayed <coughs> in going. About one hour passed, there was no car coming that way, there's no way to go and we were stranded on the road. Now surprising, when I reached the place where we were going to have the program, the Sahaja Yogis took over, they took the responsibility and they were very busy giving realizations to others and working it out, otherwise they would not. They could not believe that they have power to give realization. I may tell them, but they would not raise their hands. And just because the time was there and they thought so many people are here, Mother is not coming or she may be coming, so it's our responsibility. In that way they took the responsibility. So when you are beyond the time, you become responsible for that moment. It's such a responsibility which is also collective, means you just, all of you become responsible. It's very surprising, we are so many here, <clears throat> There's no quarrel, no fight, nothing. 
we are very nicely settled now, just beyond all kinds of stupid ideas of attacking each other. That happens <coughs> because you are not involved with the time. The time cannot bow you down. Perhaps if it were not you people, some other people, they would have thrown stones on my car, thinking, so it is so late she comes, we are here boiling in the heat. They would have resented, but not the people who are beyond time. They are nicely sitting down, enjoying themselves. It doesn't matter, the time passes. Then you become dharmatit. You become beyond dharma, beyond your human nature. That means whatever you do is religious. Whatever is your endeavor is religious. If, say, you are in a business, you would like to do business in a religious manner because you are beyond religion. You are not bothered as to follow a particular pattern or ritual of any religion, but you are beyond it. Like <coughs> people who are, see, not beyond religion, they must get up early in the morning, they are bound by their rituals and they pass through the rituals and if one of the rituals is not done, they are very unhappy and shaken up. But not you. For you, you are always in dhyan, always in meditative mood and anything goes wrong, you just jump into that awareness where you get the solution and you are not disturbed, not disturbed at all when things go wrong. Like ritualistic nature makes you very constricted, very docile, sometimes can be aggressive also. People with their ritualism trouble others a lot. Like one lady who was supposed to be our friend came to my house, so she said, I'm a vegetarian. I said, then, but I can't eat the food which, in which non-veg food has been cooked. I said, all right, so we'll have to get new utensils. So I went and bought new utensils for her. So she said that you have to be careful that even the spoon should not be used. So I had to go and get her for her spoon. Then the, she said, tumblers because people are taking food here who are eating non-veg food. So you better get us something which is absolutely new. So I had to incur all this problem. And then she was in the kitchen and she wouldn't allow our cook to cook anything for us. She said, first I will cook and then you can cook. And she made such a nuisance out of her that instead of being a guest, she became a pest. And this is what happens to people who are ritualistic because they are very demanding. They go on demanding that this is our dharma. I know of another story, was told to me by somebody in Bombay. She said, this lady who came to me as a guest because she was related to something very high up, she was worse than my great-great-great-grandmother. I said, really? He said, I can't understand that in India we have such people still living. She came here and she said, I cannot take water from the tap. You have to get it from some sort of a well. Now there are only two wells in Bombay. So people had to go and fetch the water. But the cook had to be completely drenched in water and then only he could cook because if he cooks without that, then I won't eat. And she went on and on and on that. And the cook got sick with pneumonia 
Another cook came and he got flu, you see. This lady didn't mind, she said, no, that's my style. So she asked me, what should we do with such people, mother? I said, you should have asked her that we have this thing. If you like it, well and good, otherwise you don't eat, it's all right, good. Fasting is a very good thing. That's the only solution for such people who are so self-centered and so much bothering others. So this self-centeredness comes to us because we think this is our dharma, this is our right, this is everything belongs to us, how they dare they do not do it. How much we trouble others, how much we make them inconvenient, how much we try to uh, make their lives miserable, we never think. We go on demanding things. This is my dharma, what can I do? This is what I have to do. But it becomes such a conditioning of the mind that I've seen many cases in Sahaja Yoga who got conditioned like that. There was a lady, French lady, who came to Sahaja Yoga and her mother was very ritualistic to begin with. And she was so troublesome that she must go to church every Sunday. She would dress up well, go to church and come back. And one day she just disappeared. So they told the police to find out this lady. And when he went to find out the lady, the police said that we can't find her, God knows where she is disappeared. Then she said, all right, go and find out in the church. She was still sitting in the church. Next time again she disappeared. It happened three, four times. So the police said, say, we have finished with her. Now if you want, you can put her in the old people's house and that's all. So they sent her to an old people's house. So this Sajogini told me, Mother, very surprising, they are otherwise very stupid people. They go on sitting, brooding, talking nonsense, like mad, they have all become senile and their senile decay very well seen. But what happens? That on a Sunday they all dress up well and go to church. That's the only point <laughs> where they are safe. It's very surprising how the conditioning works. There was one pe person I had who came and stayed with us and he said, I'm a very good driver. So I said, all right. But he only knew driving, he didn't know about London, what sort of a place London. Now he knew the driving very well, but if I had to go to the north, he'll drive me to the south. If I have to go to the east, he'll drive me to the west. I said, what's the matter? You know driving. Yes, I know driving, that I know, but I don't know anything about road, I have no road sense. One day the police caught hold of him, I was also in the car. He said, where are you going? He said, I am going to such and such place. So he said, now you have been this to this place six times, again you are coming back to the same point six times. So in the old age I have known that these things form a kind of a habit, but in young age also you can find people <laughs> get so conditioned by their style. So this is what you can call the human element where you get attached or get bothered about something. Now it's a kind of a, I should say, a madness that somebody demands this, somebody demands that, I don't like this, I don't like that, it goes on and on. It's so common to say, I don't like, I like. It is very surprising that they go on saying like this, they go to somebody's house, no, no, I don't like this carpet. It's not your carpet, you not purchased it. This person has purchased the carpet. What have you got to do? Why should you say, I don't like? Who are you? You have not paid for you. The one who has paid likes it, finished. Why do you want to pass your remarks, I don't like? Are you a conniser? So to criticize us. Somebody is wearing, supposing the hair in a way, but I don't like this kind of hairdress. Why? 
I don't like, that's all. <coughs> Then it goes from there to human beings and everyone. Who are you to like or dislike? What is your position? Why should you say, I like or don't like? But it's very common, especially in the West, to pass such remarks, I don't like. Uh, I don't like India, all right. If you don't like, sit at home, why did you come in? I don't like Turkey. Why? Because if supposing anybody is wearing a long skirt, they'll say, no, I don't like, because it is Turkish. So you should only wear short skirts. I mean, we don't like short skirts, supposing, but one should not say that, I don't like it, because it hurts people, it uh, takes away the pride of the person. Now when you are in Sahaja Yoga, you must know that you are not normal human being, according to the normal standards, you are above them. Your likes and dislikes are different from them. And your whole attitude has changed. You have, sometimes you are just like children as you talk like small little children, very innocently, and sometimes you talk very profound things. Now this is unknown to people who are supposed to be normal, because normal people, you know, they are so bombastic, all the time they go on saying, I, I, I. Kabira has said that when a goat is living, she goes on saying, my, 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 means I, I, I. But when she's dead and her intestines are drawn into a kind of a wire for, uh, we call dhunak, means with which they separate the seeds from the cotton, that time what she says, tu hi, tu hi, tu, you are, you are, you are. You are everything. When you say that, immediately your attention goes away from others, finding faults with them, finding what's wrong with them, using your brains all the time to criticize others, to make fun of others, sometimes even to talk ill of others. People enjoy gossips. Why? They enjoy gossip because they don't know that another person is the same as myself and I have no business to gossip about that person. So this understanding, I should say, this loving wisdom doesn't exist when you are a normal human being. At the slightest provocation you can get angry, start doing all kinds of things just like a uh, bull in the China shop, you can behave anyway. Suddenly you find them just growing up into that. The reason for that is you are not yet a Sahaja Yogi. But Sahaja Yogi is a person who enjoys all kinds of things. Say somebody becomes very angry and hot temper. He also sees that what is happening, how he is being. So actually it is not a dharma that you get angry with someone, it's not. It is something very low to be angry with others, to be all the time shouting at others, to be exacting things from others or to criticize others thinking you are something great. And this doesn't pay. By the time you come to the end of life you'll find you haven't got one friend one neighbor. Another thing is that when you are very egoistical, you think no end of yourself and you go on talking, jabbering, talking, jabbering and the another person just gets bored stiff 
but still you are talking, talking, talking about, I did this, I did this, I went there, I, I, I. It goes to any limit and you are not ashamed as to what you are saying. I have seen people who have taken to all kinds of funny attitudes towards others when they are just normal human beings. If somebody says something wrong about somebody, somebody says that uh, that person is like this, I know, you see, did this way, immediately it goes into their mind, yes, it's true. Now that makes your mind a sick mind, we can say vikrut, where the mind is not normal, you become sick and you accept all this sickness and go on accepting it, accepting it till you are a sick person. And this sickness is extremely dangerous, not for others so much as for yourself, because nobody can stand such a sick personality. Recite the three Mahamantras. Shri Kalvi Saksha 
We thank you, Shri Mataji, for all your blessings and this beautiful collective morning meditation. Let's all bow down to Shri Mataji, raise our mother Kundalini, and put bandhan. Mm-hmm. 